Hi, I'm Darren Salisbury. I'm product manager for Mongoose, and we're out here to take a look at the Booter downhill bike. Let's check it out. This bike is the Booter Team. It is uh, called a team because it runs a, a kit, parts uh, just like Andrew Needling and Eric Carter run. So it has all of our sponsors on here. So let's go to the front end and we'll go to the back. We have the uh, Sun Ringley wheel set. It's the ADD wheel set. Bomber tough yet reasonably light for downhill use. Eric Carter helped design this downhill tire. It uses kind of sticky rubber. Very, very grippy on the rocks and wet roots. Suspension duties are being handled by Rock Shocks. Up front is a boxer team. It's coil sprung with their motion control damper on there. And on the back is the Rock Shock Vivid. And the Vivid's pretty slick for a, a downhill shock because it has a separately adjustable beginning and ending rebound. So you can make it very plush and fast over the chattery bumps. Yet when you go off and G out the bike and really take a big hit, then slow, slow it down at the uh, end of the stroke. Crank duties are handled by the hollow forged Holzfellers from uh, Truvative. We got fun pedals on there. On the back end is a nice SRAM drivetrain, so XO, rear derailleur, short cage, downhill cassette. Stopping everything, you can see at the back here is the brand new Avid Elixir CR brakes. So very light, uh, but good stoppers uh, when you're hauling this big downhill bike. Cockpit up here is handled by Fun, so we have Fun direct mount stem made to go straight onto the boxer crown and the fun full-on bar, just like EC and Andrew run. SDG is handling where you, you put your bottom, so you got the I-beam saddle, very tough and lightweight, easy to adjust with just one bolt, and they were nice enough to do up a custom cover for us on this, just match our graphics. E13 has the chain guide on this bad boy. Some of the frame features on this bike uh, were direct result from feedback from our downhillers like Steve Romanuk, Andrew Needling, Eric Carter. For this year we changed up the hardware was one of the big things. We put oversized hardware in the bike. We've gone to uh, a non-adjustable travel design which allows us to keep it simple and a solid rear end keeping, uh, you know, the bike's really stiff. It tracks very well in the corners and uh, it's got a lot of travel. The new hardware feels extra supple in it. I'm a big guy, I'm 200 pounds, so I came up with um, some ideas that some of the guys that were a buck 50, buck 60, never got the feel. <laughs> now, we also did some new paint designs that uh, you know I hope is gonna cater to the free ride guys a bit more. It looks pretty, uh, pretty slick these days. Long goose booter. What we wanted to do is take what we had with the ECD model from last year and really bring in a a look of the frame that's more current with uh, our other bikes like the Kyber and the Pinner. And in addition, we wanted to see if we could reduce weight and increase uh, bearing life and smoothness. Uh, and we ended up with a very tough frame uh, capable of handling anything on the World Cup circuit or in a big hucking movie like Crank 7, like you might see Steve run. So up front, we have a 1.5 head tube, very robust, gives us a lot of weld area gusseted top and bottom. If we move back here on this monocoque uh, top tube, we get to this seat cluster, and this is very, very thick. Uh, it gets scalloped away here so that we can keep the weight down, yet keep it tough if this thing gets tossed over. New shock mount actually integrates the derailleur and brake cables to shoot right through there. Uh, makes a nice clean look to the bike. And then we'll get into all new hardware. So we increased the axle diameter from 10 millimeters on the old design up to 17 millimeters. And the bearing size went from a 25 millimeter to a 32 millimeter bearing. Much smoother turning and it also uh, ends up holding up a lot longer. Down on the lower bearings, we went from an eight millimeter axle last year to a 10 millimeter axle this year and increased the bearing size as well. Overall, this thing should just keep on running for a whole season without having to touch it. So I guess that about wraps it up on the booter. You know, like we try to build in affordable performance, uh, or as EC calls it, the Whistler factor. So we give you a bike that's capable of one of these athletes, uh, like one of our pro athletes could handle it. Uh, but we do it at a price where you could actually have enough money in your pocket saved over that you could take that trip to Whistler. Happy trails.